What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with a cool look at a new horse heresy product. Well, I guess it isn't too new, but it is uh, It is still something that most heresy players out there will want to take a look at, especially if they play the Mechanicum. This is the red book for the Mechanicum. It's the, it's the smaller codex size book that basically collects all of the rules for all of the Mechanicum throughout book one through five, five being Tempest, which came out in uh, I guess uh, f uh, fall of last year, so it's um it's basically a way to bring together all the rules, collect them up, give you a summary, give you kind of like a, an appendix of rules in the back. It's a 120 page book, like I said, it's roughly the size of a normal codex, and it gives you all the rules for um, the me Mechanicum Tagmata, the Legio, Legio Cybernetica, and the Order Reductor armies, and all of their support stuff, you know, like aircraft, titans all the different uh, transports and things like that. And it also has the rules uh, for playing games for uh, like specific missions in the Age of Darkness in the back as well. So we're gonna jump on into that. But before we get to all that, I would like to invite you to stay in the trenches. Uh, click on the Patreon link up on the left and help us stay ad-free for all of our videos in 2016. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com, and head on over to the longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports. For exclusive content, early access features, and more, become a veteran of the long war today. So like I was saying, Definitely a cool book to pick up. Uh, you don't really necessarily need it if you are playing Heresy. Now, right now, we're kind of in this weird lull where the uh, Crusade Army Red Book and also the Legion Red Book are kind of, we know they're coming, but we don't know when. And those are s something that are a staple for playing Horse Heresy. But for this right here, uh, it really only pertains to if you're going to pick up and take mechanical units or field a whole mechanical army. So if you have a way in your army to get one of those uh, le uh, cyber cybernetic cortex uh, then this is a good collection of just a quick reference rules. Uh, alternatively, if you're playing with Titans, you're going to need this one right here as well. And the Titan rules definitely changed and got a lot better in Horus Heresy here. So let's take a closer look at the contents page so we can kind of run it down because, you know, Mechanicum's like one of those things that not a lot of people are like all about, you know, like, hey, I don't really know what's in there. I don't really know what it's all, all about. So we're, we're going to kind of work through it. So first off, you get the, the very first uh, army list that came in all of this. You get the Warlord traits. Um, it also has the Cyber cyber Thulogy, which is basically like your special rules, or I guess if you're more familiar with 40K, like the Canicles in 40K for uh, the Skatari or the Cult Mechanicus, rather. Uh, the, the allies chart and all the optional stuff in here for your organization charts and things like that and just general other rules that pertain that are in the front of you know all the heresy books there and then you get into all of your your slots here your HQs elites troops dedicate transport fast attack heavy support fortification Lord's War now interestingly enough uh, some of the new releases that we're seeing right now, like for instance the Domitar class uh, Automaton just came out. That's that big ass robot that's bigger than a Castle Axe. That's a recent release on Forge World. So those were existing, uh, those had an existing rule set. They didn't have existing models quite yet. Another example right here is uh, the, where is it? The uh, Macarid Explorer, which is a heavy support choice, which technically doesn't have a model yet either, but I believe. In book six, Retribution, you kind of see a spoiler of it right here in this uh, battle for, what is it, battle for uh, the Xanta Paradox where they're battling some uh, some alien Xenos guys. And this right here, um, it has this thing called a Servitor Ring, which I believe is right here, and this is a picture of an actual model, and they, maybe a little Easter egg in that book right there. I could be wrong, I could be way off mark, but I believe I am right. <laughs> but I guess time will tell there, right? So then it's got some other stuff that hasn't come out yet either, like some of the Order Nazis uh, variants there. But it does have all the Knight models. It does have all your Titans, your Titan Legions, your Warhounds, your Reaver, and of course the Big, the big Daddy himself, the Warlord Titan. And then in the back, it's got those uh, core missions. It's not a campaign, but it is your normal core missions that you can take uh, to play Horus Heresy, basically, or, you know, Battles in the Age of Darkness. So just kind of flipping through it. You know, you get the army list here, you get your warlord traits. They're not quite as redundant, I guess, as some of the um, rights of the Legion where you start getting all these like uh, crazy ass uh, rules that basically set the stage for your Mechanicum guys. But they do have a lot of cool special rules in and of themselves. Like uh, there's a Lords of War, um, you know, special detachments and things. And then you got the Cyber Thulogy, which is those special rules that you can take um, uh, checks on and cast basically these 
they're not like like psychic powers, but they're just kind of like um, we'll, we'll go with commands, basically, so to speak. So there's that, and that's kind of cool. Then you get into the actual army list itself, and now a lot of things here don't quite have. Um, I guess quite yet have models. Not not everything in here, and which is which is a whole interesting paradox too. Because I thought the whole thing with Games Workshop with the whole Chapter House thing was that you could you could not put a, a model in an army book and not create, or excuse me, you cannot put a unit in an army book, make a name for it, and not create a model. But it doesn't seem like Forge World very much cares uh, what's going on with uh, the whole Chapter House thing because we haven't. Since Chapter House, since 2013, we've never seen a codex come out that didn't have all the models available in it right then and there for purchase. You know, it's not like back in the day when, hey, what's the Storm Raven? That sounds pretty cool. I'm going to convert one up. And then a year later, they came out with a model for in plastic from Games Workshop. No, the Forge World doesn't seem to care about all that. The Forge World does what Forge World does. And so you're going to see a lot of things when you go to their site and you're just going to be like, well, where's this model? I, you know, I, I want it in my list and it just isn't available yet. <laughs> so kind of kind of interesting there. And like I said, you know, this book has been out for a while. The rules of all of these, you know, most recently collected was book five, which came out in the fall. And then you have the Domitar. Like I said, that's a model that had that just came out. And then you've got the the the, the Macatarid, um, uh, Explorer. It isn't even out yet. So you're gonna find stuff in here. It might be a little confusing, but you know, just use the Forge World site and kind of you can kind of figure it all out from there. And there's the Domitar that I was just talking about. 175 points for a maniple and you can pick up a maniple of uh, three of them from Forge World as well and you got your, your it goes in um, and a cool thing about uh, you know horse heresy is you can deep strike in a lot of the uh, sentry guns and things like that and there's actually rights of war for the, the space marines the Astartes that don't that require you to take fast attacks but they're like but you can't take any servo uh, servo guns or sentry guns and things so keep all that in mind also the Ursalax we haven't seen those models we saw the models at the preview at the heresy weekend or there's those cool um, kind of jetpack dudes with like power fists and things, but they haven't gone out for sale quite yet. And the Trios armored conveyor, um, that's the Karos right there. That's the close combat, or, or excuse me, the shooting version of it. But you know, they never really had the model yet, so you're not going to see it in a lot of the illustrations and things in here. So that's the whole section on the actual, um, Mechanicum stuff and then it gets into terrain and some other things you can take too like there's a Karos that I just showed you in that picture and then you got the Castellum Stronghold which is that Roma battle tile uh, the Ordinatus macro engine which just basically came out for release actually yes it is out for release now and then it gets into the knight section and you got all sorts of uh, cool knights you got your basic knights you got your ones that are uh, Mechanicum uh, indentured, I guess, for lack of a better term, there, Megara, and then of course the the Lancer, the uh, um, Castigator, and all those guys. And then you get into Legio Cybernetica if you want to go that route, um, and they have the list there. And then the Ordo Reductor, which is like basically like the um, how, how do I want to explain it? They're basically like the the heat. They bring the heat. They bring the heavy weapons to bear, and they're not taking. You know, they're just like, yo, we are the heavy hitters. We are here. We're getting this done, and that's what these guys are. And then it gets into all that. So you got tank batteries. You know, big ass squads of of dudes, and then it gets into the Titan section, which is very similar to the one that's in Tempest already. It's almost pretty much verbatim, word for word. And we covered that uh, back in uh, our book five review. But there's some really interesting rules in here that you want to take a look at. The Tower and Monstrosity rules for each one of these that hopefully will get ported over to their counterparts in 40k here soon. Because Eldar got them. So, yo, let's go Imperium. And then it gets into the missions themselves, which I was just kind of basically mentioning. They're just kind of one-offs, you know. Um, not exactly a campaign type, type thing, but it gives you something to, to play with all your guys. Now, when we get to the back, this is the appendix type section. And what I've been doing is I've been taking these and making color copies, two two sided color copies and getting them laminated. Because what's really cool about it is, you know, even though this is a codex size book, sometimes just having the little, the little flip charts there, you know, just basically kind of flipping through them and looking at yourself. Now, there is a lot for the Mechanicum. I mean, it goes through all these special rules, and then it gets to your charts in the back, which it's always cool to have the weapons on hand, which I feel like, you know, having uh, double-sided versions of these would be pretty cool, but doing all the special rules might be a little uh, a little too much, because when you're making your army, you're probably just going through the book anyways. You know what I mean? So you probably don't quite need that. But on the tabletop, this definitely helps out right here. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, more and more I play, and the more and more 
um, you know, I think about it, you know, my time is so, it's so crazy, like, where my, where my time goes sometimes, and I'm just like, man, when I step up to the table, I want to give my opponent a really good, uh, really good game, but sometimes I, I have to go fumbling through the book to find something, I almost feel like a noob sometimes, because when you, when you have so many additions on your brain, and you think something's one way, it's not necessarily that you might be cheating, you might, I literally think the rules are a certain way, because they were, like, three editions ago, <laughs> so all you new players out there, you know, that's, uh, that's definitely a boon for y'all, because you're not going to get mixed up like that, but, but for some of the air quotes old timers like me, it gets a little confusing, uh, so what I like to do is get these little quick reference cards, so I can, you know, just, you know, not take up a lot of time, and, you know, just play real quick, this is more about playing and having fun, and uh, giving, you know, that good game to your opponent, playing with your opponent, than against them, I feel like sometimes, um, then, uh, then screwing it up and, and doing something wrong, even if it's you know an innocent mistake, they're always out there. And you know, I feel like there is no perfect game of 40k or even 30k uh, because we're all still learning, and the additions change so much, and we just have so much on our brains sometimes. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the review of the new Mechanicum Thagmata Army List for Horus Heresy, and of course, Battles in the Age of Darkness. It's the quick reference red book. It's codex size. I think these go for about 35 pounds, so it's about codex price, give or take. So, you know, you might want to think about picking one up on your next Forge World order there. Um, you know, there's always something new coming out from Forge World, gotta admit it. <laughs> Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.